Last year and a half has been a tipping point for most organizations. The hybrid society is here and it's here to stay. Lockdowns have made us challenged to rethink the way we work, the way we school our children. And from a public services point of view, I see more challenges. We need to rethink our CO2 footprint, we need to rethink our tax model, we need to rethink how we interact with our citizens, and we need to rethink the way we house our people. So how can technology help us face these challenges? Today, I have Ron Toledo, Master Architect and CTO of our Global Insights and Data Organization, and Erik Horweg, who is Lead Public Services of our Dutch Capgemini Invent Organization. Speaking of technology, uh, Ron, Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen trends popping up and going down uh, again uh, greatly. Um, and I was wondering which trends are still afloat this year, since you are you know, founding father of the tech report uh, Technovision that has an update annually. So I'm just wondering what's uh, in it this year. Well, there, there are always 37 different technology trends in, in, in Technovision every year again. The main theme this year was be like water, and I think that's an important message to, to, to public services as well, because we need to be more adaptive, more agile, um, you know, we need to be more responsive and more resilient as well, and you need to create a flow that, that helps you to achieve the things, even, for example, with less human resources available, because uh, we're facing an era of scarcity in many different ways. Be Like Water is, is, is based, by the way, on a famous quote by martial artist Bruce Lee, who made a name for himself by, by being very adaptive and, and, and almost formless in the way that he would challenge his and, and deal with his opponents and was able to overcome any challenge and pick up any opportunity by, by being almost shapeless and formless in, in the way that, that he would, you know, flow around it. Um, and if you look at technologies, there's many technologies that do the same thing. If you look at infrastructure, our ability to link up to any sensor and anything and any physical objects, for example in the city, will make us much more responsive and will give us a very interesting, uh, you know, additional amount of data to, to analyze. Application services become much more little microservices that we can combine with all sorts of other application services, both inside a public services organization, but also somewhere outside there in the world, in some ecosystem. Uh, data, of course, is, is crucial uh, as, as a tool to, to be much more resilient, uh, to share better, to collaborate better, but also to create next generation algorithms, AI, that will enable us to do things more autonomously, more automated. Uh, process automation tools also help us to be more responsive, but also deliver a higher level of, let's say, um, services, even if you have to do it with, with fewer people. And then, of course, there's a user experience. If, if we create a user experience, particularly towards citizens, that makes it so much easier to interact with public services, uh, and it, it makes it almost intuitive to, to interact with it, then that's a generation of, of user interfaces that, that will truly make um, you know, the quality level and the perception of, of what public services has to offer to its citizens it will raise that, that perception significantly. And maybe you do it even with less people. And that is the, the beautiful thing about it. So the theme is to be like water. Be it's like about water. being formless and being adaptive. Uh, there's a lot of technology uh, uh, trends. Is there more uh, in there? So can we just apply this technology? Or is there a certain mindset that we need to uh, adapt in that? Um, I've often find in, in transformation, certainly also within public services, that it's not only a matter of identifying the right technologies, it's also a matter of having a different attitude towards how you embrace them and how you change together with these technologies as they change as well. So, so we've, we've emphasized what we call design principles like, like um, adapt first. So if you build something, you build in the fact that it will be adapted later on because you know it will have to change you build in that it's open, so by default you're able to connect to others, even if you don't know who these others will be in some ecosystem that you want to connect to. Um, there, there's the notion of, uh, of, of what we call every business is a technology business, so both the people that are in the business lines within a public services organization and the IT and data people need to act as one, not, not you know, communicate with each other through requirements. Um, and, and maybe the most important uh, principle of them all, why do you want to change? What is what you're aiming for with your, with your digitally led type of change and innovation? What are you actually trying to achieve? What is, what is your story and what is our story that we can all line up to? 
Yeah. And these are mindset principles, and sometimes they're much more um, important to the success than actually identifying the right juicy technologies. Yeah, exactly. It's about combining mindset these and, uh, and yes. technology. Thank you. So, over to you, uh, Eric. Um, what would you say is the top three of challenges that the, the Dutch public services organizations are going to face in the coming years? Yes, well, first of all, it's very recognizable what, uh, what Ron uh, told us um, in terms of a story. I think the story for the public services uh, to adhere to is Society 5.0. We all know Industry 4.0, uh, the fourth industrial revolution, and the technologies used, uh, as mentioned also by Ron, uh, in that fourth industrial revolution can also be used for society, to tackle society, uh, societal problems. In order to do so, I think the public services need to take into account uh, three preconditions. Uh, first of all, skills. It's very important to invest in digital skills uh, in order to be or being like water and make it flow. It's very important that not only the IT professionals become more savvy of also what is going on on the business side and more interdisciplinary, but also and especially by the directors uh, of uh, public bodies in order to uh, be conscious of uh, the, the, the need to invest in e-skills. And third, of course, the, uh, the workforce itself. Uh, if you know that the World Economic Forum uh, says 1.2 billion jobs will be affected by new technologies in the world. And if you then compare that to 15% of organizations really investing in reskilling the workforce, that is a huge difference, of course. So uh, the, 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 the conscious and the, the, the idea of, uh, on top level of organization that we need to invest there is, uh, is crucial, very important precondition. So that's one. Second, I would say data spaces. In order to make data flow like water, it is important to, uh, well, first we had, we had um, open data, huh? the, 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 the quest for open data, and then we had data sharing initiatives. But at the same time, we had the GDPR, very right, righteously so, uh, making sure that uh, the citizens, the customers were protected in their uh, personal uh, data. So the adoption of the sharing of data was really limited. So the next step is creating ecosystems of public, private uh, organizations, sharing data in a space. But that will only work if the preconditions there are right, if there is a business case, if there is real value and trust among those players. And government can play a crucial role there, yeah, creating those uh, preconditions. Thirdly, I would say in Society 5.0, there is a, a trust between the citizen and government is crucial. Uh, the interdependency between the two, it will become greater and greater. Uh, and if there's no trust, basically society 5.0 will not uh, come uh, to, to life. So very important there is to basically uh, ethics by design, to, to, to make sure that the public values that we like in the Netherlands, that we like in Europe, are embedded in those uh, algorithms that Ron talked about. Maybe mm -hmm. public values by design would be a good, uh, huh. good way to go. Nice. Public that's, values that's, by design. That's good. So it's uh, about uh, data spaces. Um, it's about trust, building trust between citizen and, and public organizations. And it's about skills. Correct. All right. So hearing that, uh, Ron, what would you say, what would your advice be for public services? How can they become like water? Well, every public services business is also a public services technology business. So, so I like what Eric just said, you know, everybody, we know that IT people need to understand more of the, the business that is in their organization, but vice versa, everybody at the business side would need to become a little bit of a data scientist, a bit of a software engineer, a bit of an IT expert. So, so in order to do that, you, you need to um, share, uh, I would say, uh, technology and innovation stories together. You need to speak more and more the same language, whether you're from business and IT. You need to be playful and hands-on about it. You need to internalize it. It's no longer something that is in the other department. It's actually your own business, because technology is, is everybody's business these days. Uh, Technovision is not only a framework with juicy trends. It also describes all sorts of different ways to engage and create playful technology-driven dialogues, you know, to see the next frontier, to actually up the skills of people. 
And, and there are different ways to do it. The latest thing, I have it's, it's a sort of a scoop over here. Is yeah. also, we even have a Technovision <laughs> card deck, you know. Hey, that I found it over here. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, surprise. Such a, such a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. but, but hey, listen, the 37 different trends. And, and there's even ways of, you know, let's, let's create a little digital story, the day in the life of, of somebody in public services. What could it look like with these four technologies that I choose? And I'll present them to the others and we'll discuss it. Or I'll just do it for myself. So many different ways of, of getting busy with this stuff. Every business is a technology business, so it's everybody's business to be involved in, in innovation and technology. Yeah, and then you say that Technovision really provides business and technology with, with a language, it's both ways language. To, shared language. to find each other exactly. and become one. Exactly, so to, to become one. Yeah. So maybe the challenge would be uh, play Technovision cards on the board of uh, directors with every public organization. Very interesting thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, th I think so. Um, but it, it seems like you know there's a lot of work to be done. There's a there's a road ahead of us within public services to really, you know, adapt this mindset and adapt these new trends and skill people, uh, where where we have fewer people to to work with. Um, so besides you know playing the card deck in the boardroom, uh, Eric, <laughs> uh, what what would be the first steps? What would you would you advise public services to start on this journey? Very crucial is looking at your uh, your workforce uh, um, and and really uh, do an assessment in terms of uh, not only IT professionals but the complete workforce uh, on the capacity to adopt to these new uh, technologies. Because if if it's just a, a thing from uh, on the on the IT side, it won't work. So you need to take the whole workforce into account. Uh, assess current status uh, and, and really do something about uh, uh, strategic uh, workforce planning, I would say, uh, given the cards uh, of uh, Ron uh, into account. So start playing cards and then start investing in your people. Very important. So be, be playful, be mindful and start investing. Just, you know, start that, uh, that journey. Yeah. All right, awesome. Thank you guys both for, uh, for joining us uh, today. Um, so we spoke about the challenges that we face within public services. And we see by adopting not only the right technology, but also the right mindset in both IT departments and business departments together, we can take on these challenges and we can start building public services that are like water. If you're interested and if you want to know how we can apply these things to your organization, then don't hesitate to contact us. We'd love to have a chat with, uh, with you. Also, a lot of material is, uh, is available out there. There's the Technovision report, which is available. Uh, the Society 5.0 report is available. And another scoop is there because uh, soon there will be a public services specific Technovision report uh, available as well. Um, and the links to all this, uh, these beautiful reports are um, available in the description field of this video. So, take care. Thank you. Thank you.